<laughs> you speeding? Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Welcome to the. That was, that was loud, wasn't it? Coco Melon. All right, okay. Welcome to the Create Rate podcast, where as creators, we don't have a work rate, we have a create rate. The whole point of this podcast is to have creators share their knowledge and experiences on the expertise so we can all learn from each other. And joining me today is none other than the musician himself, Mr. Richard Carter. Hello, hello. Hello, Caleb. How are you? Why do you sound like a robot? That's me. That's my entry. Sometimes <laughs> I do that on stage. Like I'll be like, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Rich Carter. You know what I mean? That's true. That's I true. That. I do that a lot. And then like after I'm like... <laughs> Is why do you feel like is it? Do you feel like you've warmed up and then now you've like you feel nervous at the beginning and you've warmed up towards the end? I, I think it's a funny thing. I think it's just funny. <coughs> like enough. when people are like, Who's this dude? Hi uh, Richard, yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I like to it's like a false pretense. Mm-hmm. It's like when the nerd goes on stage in the movies and then he starts busting movies like Like in you know, like an eight mile, how they're surprised at this Yeah. Kai is is on stage and he just I like doing that. All right, cool. Um, well, anyway, I've introduced you as a musician, but let's be a bit more specific. What do you do? What kind of music do you create? So on. So I'm a producer artist. I create like, I'd say alternative hip hop. And I always say, I'd say alternative hip hop. It's because it's hip hop at the core of what the movement is and the feel. But it doesn't really matter what it sounds like. It can be jazzy Mm -hmm. electronic orchestral it can be um dreamy it can be dark it can be whatever the feel is but hip-hop is more in the way of keeping it real as they say so when you say when you label it as hip-hop and then you have alternative hip-hop yeah do you just mean hip-hop but taking a bit out of context yeah just like taking the essence of what it feels to be hip-hop okay all right i got you i got you yeah Yeah. so how did this all start because i know the story of you finding a piano outside someone's house your house my yeah is that my house it was uh, a piano i think i was two and there was like a piano in the rain outside of a neighbor's house actually yeah yeah now that i think about it it was a neighbor's house and they were throwing it away Mm. and we said okay we'll keep it and then i took it in well i didn't i was tiny we (laughs) took it in i didn't help out i just touched it (laughs) <laughs> they took it in and put it at the side of my house like that on there's like a hallway well alleyway to my garden we put it in the side bit and i'd put like a little cover over it every night i'll come out and play it at the side of my house and then finally we got some people to actually like take it apart bring it all in and put it back together wow. oh so it was a, a big thing yeah is it oh, yeah okay. I, whenever you hit say keyboard or i hear the story <coughs> sorry excuse me i've got hay fever right now bro, so it's I'm the stuck. piano in my house <coughs> you know that Piano oh, in my okay. house. Oh, shit. It's that one. Bro, that's called history. It's the same one, yeah. That's got that lot. is the one. That's cool. That's awesome. So, do you feel like, a bit of a heavy, deep question, but do you feel like you were destined for music? So, what I mean by that is if you never found this piano on the side of the street at the age of two, do you feel like you still would have found your way to the position you are in now? Or do you feel like everything happens for a reason so that piano led you here? I would say, yeah, it made sense. Mm-hmm. as in like it should have happened mm-hmm. like um there's so when i'm like oh yeah but there's other avenues but i'm like yeah that's the first opening point maybe there would have been another one and at this point like i feel so much like inclination towards music mm-hmm. that if i don't do it i'm not me right. so yeah i'm on that pathway of like if i don't create i am nothing okay cool and then <clears throat> when you say i don't create but <laughs> that's deep <laughs> that's it. That's like, i don't make nothing why I'm do you think nothing. i'm using on swiftly for that i was like oh <laughs> um okay but when you say if Worthless. i don't create sorry, <laughs> sorry if i don't create i i'm nothing yeah but do you feel like every action you do or everything that you do music is is related to that for example, when you walk down the street, do you walk in a certain manner where you're stepping to the song that you're listening to? Or if you're cooking, are you cooking in a certain way to the music you're listening to and, and stuff like that? I find that I eat a lot with music. I <laughs> <Really>? like chew. Because <laughs> you know how like you can get like the the chew when it crunches and then the out is like... You get like two different beats, two different hits with the beat. I eat with the beat. I walk with the beat. When I... <laughs> Like everything is musical and like at every point of the day, 
inspiration can come. Mm -hmm. And I've been reading a book by Rick Rubin. I want to get onto these, yeah. Yeah, we can. I'll talk about it a little bit. Yeah, talk about it a little bit now. But like about time. um like whenever inspiration hits, mm -hmm. just um dropping everything. Like I tell everyone. I'm sure my, my family understands more, but like if I'm in a relationship with someone that doesn't actually know me from mm -hmm. when I was smaller mm -hmm. and like what I've built myself into, I tell my girlfriend like, okay, if I'm onto something, you can either be in the room or I might feel like you need to leave the room or I need to leave the table now and I need to come back in a second. I need to record a voice note just to slap this down before it escapes. So yeah, everything is leading into translating whatever I'm being sent mm -hmm. out. And when you have those moments of telling people and letting them know if this, this thing comes into mind, I'm going. Yeah. How do people react to that? Because like, I feel like people, <coughs> I wouldn't, but I feel like other people might just be like, oh, this guy's crazy. Or, yeah. Like, this guy's a bit, you know, loose in the head. Like, how do you think people like that view you? I think if you don't know what the music sounds like, mm -hmm. then you're going to be like, that sounds really pretentious. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Who does he think he is? Wow. He's leaving. Me. Wow. He thinks he's going to be sick. But like, I feel like what's really funny going off of that is, you know, when you say, oh yeah, I make music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the instant thought is, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> oh, another one of these cool. soundcloud rappers. <laughs> Hibbity, snibbity, spibbity, bibbity. <laughs> and then I just like, I just go like, yeah. I don't Ch bother. <laughs> I don't bother. And then I'll just say like, yeah, it's based off like sounds and colors and textures and stuff. And mm -hmm. then I just, I'd use a bit of words to intrigue them and I just let them, the curiosity hit them if they want. Yeah. And then when they hear it, they're like, oh shit. He's actually good. And then if I say, yeah, when I have an idea, leave me alone. They're like, oh my God, he's doing something profound. There must be something going on. But if you don't know, it's like, what are you we'll doing? Yeah, That's yeah. cringe. So, I don't know. I can't actually remember who said it. And I don't know the exact quote, but there's a quote of, um, in order to be insanely successful on something, you have to be a little bit crazy about it. Would you say that you're crazy about music? And I don't mean it in a loving, loving, passion way. Like, do you think you're actually crazy about music? Yeah. So this is you like in all your essence yeah it's um mm -hmm. it's a pathway of like my mind that if i focus on it properly i can really push into it and channel it like a f like flow state kind of thing nice and that's like just it's a different realm and feeling in a way and i say like I leave everything behind, forget about everything. I come out, I've forgotten to eat sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that's probably like an ADHD thing. I don't even know if I have that, but like, no, I think distracted. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. About, I don't know about Ben, but we've had that conversation before. Like you just forget to do the basic things. Like you forget to eat when you're editing videos, you forget to, to fall asleep. Cause mm. <laughs> how many nights up do we do, we do this shit <laughs> um so i feel like that's not even uh, unless we have adhd but i don't even think that's a <coughs> an external problem I just they usually band together <laughs> <laughs> but i just feel like you have to be that level of crazy where you forget yeah. to eat you forget to sleep and you're just so dedicated to it i'm sure you have had those nights where you wake up and the sun's rising or not woken up but you're working and you look out your window and the sun is rising and you hear them birds outside and it's like shit man yeah um, cool, but so <clears throat> music, how I um, have zero knowledge on it and how many times have you shown me a song that you've made and you go, oh, I listened to this part coming up and without you telling me about a background noise, I would never hear this noise and yeah. you've had to point that out to me. So tell me more about music. Tell me about the process from A to B. How do you start making a song or a score or something on those lines? So there's so many different ways it can start. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably know like, with an idea of any sort, it can come from anything. So my music can start at, I sit on the computer and I force myself to make something as in like, not force because I don't want to, but I'm like, okay, can I make a sick song? Can I even make a sick song? Start just like playing chords or something. Sometimes I'll have a dream and then I'll hear that song and I'm so convinced that it's real that maybe if I wake up, I'm like, damn, what song was that? And I'm like, oh shit, Shit, oh, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Uh, Goddamn, <laughs> uh, uh, that song doesn't exist. I need to quickly record it because in the dream, it was a full song. Mm -hmm. Like I'm hearing it and stuff. 
Sometimes it's like that. I'll go down to the piano sometimes. Sometimes I'm just feeling a type of way that I'll just sit on the piano and just start playing it. And suddenly like a melody comes out and I'm like, damn, kinda what is nice. that? Yeah, yeah. kind of nice moment. So has it always been that way? Um, I don't want to say that anyone is doing something wrong, mm-hmm. but I feel like writing before you know what it sounds like is not the way to do it. Okay. That's what I did when I first started. I would just be, I would just be right. Maybe I'd just write it, not know how the flow is, not know the melodies, not know the sound, not know what this song is. I'm just writing mm-hmm. poetry. Ooh. And then I start a beat up and I'm like, and I'm like, that doesn't actually work. You have to like write with intention. So like, I know what the flow is going to be. Sometimes I'll create the melody. You know, when you make a chorus, it's just mm-hmm. like a little singy song. But as long as you have the sound in mind, that's the only time you should write, mm. in my opinion. So just to cover cause of the basics, because this is meant to be for everybody on any skill level, what is the difference between a chorus or a verse or a melody? Like, what's what, what are these key terms you keep mentioning? Yeah, chorus, that's your... Um, Bum, 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 ba, dum, bum, bum. Wait, no, no, that that <laughs> song doesn't have a chorus. Hold on, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Like, <laughs> or just don't give an example. Can you explain it in words? Chorus, that <laughs> part of the song where it is the most memorable part of the song. You heard it again, cause um, happy by Pharrell Williams. Mm-hmm. That part when he's like happy, dun, 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 dun. you remember that song. You don't know the verses. I know you guys don't know the lyrics of course, like, to of the other parts of the song that aren't. Oh, happy. Let me give you a look. He might know. It. Hey, maybe he knows. Maybe he knows. Maybe Lem knows. <laughs> but um, yeah, the chorus is that part that's like whoa, everything comes out, and the verse is like kind of like like that. I'm about to talk to you for a bit, or I'm gonna lay a little bit down, and then your melodies are your like the what the notes are doing. What's the path like? Right. What so the, the note doing so the chorus is when you say most memorable also like the most repeated part of the yeah. of the song the verse is the parts in between the choruses yeah I to say that. yeah and you can there's like interstructure kind of stuff you can get into because you don't have to be so strict with mm-hmm. like verse and chorus sometimes verses can in sense contain repeated ideas as well right like you start a verse with a specific way i've heard a song where they like whispered a bit of a verse and then started a verse and then later on that whisper was actually verse two and i was right, like oh right, snap right. it's like at the beginning of blow up it goes Once I, fly away, I, got no I was thinking back there's not even the full chorus it's just a little bit of it you know it's a preview so just yeah That's music in it so you go from just messing around on a keyboard or playing a few things to see if it develops into a melody where do you go from there after so then I've, I might have had that melody on the piano, the chords or something. Maybe it's 3 a.m. and I just heard a song in my head because I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> and then like, I just start translating it into software. Nice. That's the next part is just, and I, ha- I had to learn the language mm-hmm. of, I use FL Studio. Mm-hmm. So it's just learning the language and every single stage you put your music through, you kind of diminish it in a way the most like natural form of the music that you get sent in a way is when you just sing it out loud the next stage is damn okay i gotta get it into this computer the way that i hear it so i have to learn how to pick the right instrument Mm -hmm. how to create the sound because i'm hearing it but it's not real and then um okay how do i record myself well because if i record it in rubbish then i'm like Oh, that's not how it sounds it's not yeah, good yeah. and then yeah it's just learning that language and translating it into there so sometimes i record myself beatboxing while i'm walking if i've heard the song in my head i'm like that's how the drums are going to sound sometimes i will beatbox into the software mm-hmm. and then start laying the drums on the beatbox and maybe keep it or remove it afterwards it's just all about like being fluent with translating yeah that's it as i'm just a translator of stuff is so <coughs> you mentioned FL Studio. Yeah. Is the software that you use. Is that something that you'd recommend to everybody? Or is that somebody that is that something you'd recommend to a beginner? What sort of pathway should somebody take? So for example, <coughs> I don't know about everybody else, but I started off on iMovie, mm. which to is like the most beginner thing of beginner things. And I'm using Premiere Pro slash DaVinci, so it's a bit more advanced. Yeah. 
would you consider FL Studio to be a beginner friendly software? Uh yeah. They they're all good. Like, you know, you if you're into music, you probably heard like FL Logic, Ableton, uh for, you can use GarageBand if you want. Mm-hmm. Find something free if you want. Free if you want. <laughs> I paid for my software. Uh huh. In the end, <laughs> about two years later, <laughs> but like, do whatever you can to get the tools you want. Which one do you think looks pretty? You know, mm. this it's all just gonna sound very much similar. Mm. There's purists that will be like, yes, and obviously it makes sense because programs are built differently. They're gonna slightly affect it. The way like a video program would color grade may be slightly different from one to the other. The same parameter might just look slightly different because of the way the program's coded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing with music. I can kind of tell when something's made on Ableton and when something's made on Logic, but that's just because of the slight difference in the coding of the program. But it doesn't change anything for the end user of yeah. that song. Yeah. So yeah, use FL if you want. It's not like the most popular. Mm-hmm. People usually go, what, what? So why do you use it? This is what I had. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> it's like, why do I speak Japanese? Because I grew up in Japan, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But if I, I, I'm thinking of maybe using um Logic. Mm-hmm. Ableton looks really weird, so I'm scared of it. Is that a biased thing, or do you think some people would enjoy using it? They would love it. Okay. Cool. They they're good at it. Okay. I am um, just not used to it. I have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just not like it. Yeah. yeah. And. I say I'm not good at it. Not that I can't be good at it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm open to learning, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, it's funny that you mentioned, oh, I'm from Japan. So like, well, I speak Japanese, obviously. You're not from Japan, unless... Mm. unless I'm not. <laughs> I have aunties and uncles in Japan. Okay, cool. Yeah, because my granddad... You're, you're quite interested in like the Asian culture, like their, their pop culture, essentially. Yeah. And is that... Why is that because of... Uh, That would be like childhood. Mm-hmm. Like... I feel like a lot of like, uh, c- like colored people, really colored people, people of color, <laughs> really enjoy anime. And I remember I was chilling with um one of my god brothers, Junior. I went to his birthday the other day. Nice. He's thirty now. Happy birthday to him! Oh, he's thirty. Yeah, he's <laughs> old. Um, <laughs> and he he um. How old are you again? Yeah, 16 <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that um um yeah no um i'm out his house he's watching anime i just catch him watching it i'm like yo what is that that got me into it that's my entry level and then from then it's like sharing between friends yeah, yeah. and stuff like that and it's really just like giving me something to look up to in a way because a lot of like mainstream superheroes aren't like broadly raced Maybe nowadays they're mm-hmm. casting more different races, but like mm-hmm. anime is because there's an alien, there's someone from this place. They're not just humans. There's like all sorts of different people. They all look different. Their hair is different. And mm-hmm. I don't know, because they weren't like generically English and they were different to me, I felt like I could relate because I kind of felt like different. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, from then it's just like the food, like Asian food in general is probably like some of the most delicious food in the world. <laughs> Like yeah. yeah, I've been to Shanghai. <laughs> Is that your go-to? Yeah, I cook a lot of like um, Korean, Japanese, Chinese food, and yeah, I've been to Shanghai, I've been to Hong Kong. Nice. Both really cool places. One of them quite recently, right? Yeah, Hong Kong. That was this year. Nice. Really enjoyed it there. Nice and warm. <laughs> we went to like the fishing villages and stuff, and like the city centre. Mm-hmm. Really hilly. Mm-hmm. Good for hiking. Nice. I did awesome. go hiking. Yeah. Um, so talk, we've talked about, you know, your first discovery of music and also your process of music, but talk about the more of the most recent things. So, of, well, I say recent, we've worked together in the past along with Ben as well. Um, talk to me or us about what we've worked on and how it's been as a process, like, not in a, like a, in a ego boosting way, but like from, we did your first music video, was it? First released. First released music video. Other ones didn't come out. (laughs) (laughs) So Mm. (laughs) we did your first (laughs) released music video. So talk to us from time to heaven to five years is the most recent release song. 
or way yeah, ahead. Yeah, we ain't even we ain't even got a video. Yeah, I know, I know. But so talk to us from the mo- the most recent is where where I feel. Okay, cool, sweet. So let's go from let's go from time. How was it in terms of releasing your first music video to releasing Heaven as the first music video? So time. We were just vibing. We, we, I just had a suit and I was like, okay, so I'm like running because yeah. like I'm running out of time. And it was like, yeah. But then like, then that's me realizing I had a vision, but like to work with you guys is to extend what is a simple idea mm-hmm. into multiple angles, mm-hmm. into different cuts. And oh, it'd be good if it was like, you know, that kind of thing. The what ifs mm-hmm. of like my like kind of linear thought of it. And I learned a lot about like filming through you guys as well. Mm-hmm. So like when I go and work with other people or talk to other people that are working on things as well, I know like kind of what to, yeah. Okay. Like I was in a short film the other day nice. and I was, um, it was with a lovely director called Flo, Flo mm-hmm. Pauly. What's really Instagram? Cool. Uh, Flo Pauly. <laughs> If you go on my Instagram and type FLO, you'll find Flo. She's great. We were on set and I was like, I'm taking from experience mm-hmm. of heaven. Mm-hmm. I'm skipping forward. I'm going to come back mm-hmm. of like lighting. And I was like, hmm, where is our light? And then I was like, yes, we need a light for this scene. And like, I would never have thought about that in time. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. what's going on? So do you feel like working on music videos has now also expanded your knowledge on just the other industries related to music, like yeah. film and things like that? Yeah. yeah. I, and I'm always about that. I feel like creatives or or anyone, anyone is a creative, mm-hmm. need to, in general, be interested in what other people are doing. Mm. Because if you're ignorant or arrogant, whatever the right word is, to what's going on around you, you can't help. You can't talk about what's going on. You won't be able to input. You need to be able to understand little bits of what's going on around you. Like whenever you guys are talking about cameras and stuff, I know what you guys are saying. Like because I'm interested and I spend the time. To, I'll ask. I probably ask. I don't ask as much because like I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm getting there. You're invested in the conversation. Yeah. As well. When we're editing, yeah, we're editing. That's yeah. the main part. Yeah, yeah. When we're editing, we're editing. I'm not just like so. How's the edit going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sending feedback. Yeah, I like yeah. to like get involved. I'm like, and like, it's funny because, <clears throat> and I also, I'm going on a little segue. That's all right. When I like <clears throat> collaborate with my girlfriend, because she's a, uh, like a, she's an artist of many sorts, like 3D mm-hmm. games art. When I speak, I'm like sensational about what I'm saying. And like, it's like, oh, what's he talking about? In a way. Yeah. And I will just come out with something and I'll make it. And then it's kind of like, Oh damn, he he actually made something like he's not an artist, but like he made that, yeah, and then yeah, she'll yeah. take it into the next direction. Like the cover work, cover art for Heaven and Run My Mouth Part One, mm-hmm. I did like the colors and stuff, and we took pictures, and then like was like, oh damn, that works. Okay, oh, because I can see it. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. just learning to use the software to translate it. That's all an artist is. But then she's got the um the fundamentals that I don't have Mm -hmm. as in she'll get the perspective down the coloring just better than me as well I'm I like to think that I'm good with ideas most Mm -hmm. of the time and now I'm just like I'll put the play-doh in a sick shape and I'll be like yeah and then she'll cast it start vanishing it and everything and just make it a real picture so yeah from time learning from you guys then we move forward and then we were like what did we say Frog Hat. Yeah, it was Frog Hat, wasn't it? That's yeah. the, at that point we were like kind of experimenting because we hadn't worked with green, green screen much, yeah. and we were just like, let's just because it's a, it was a song where I was kind of quite s- struggling at the time. Mm-hmm. Is this mentally or is yeah, this in yeah. music? Okay, cool. Like mu- mentally, like Frog Hat was like, oh, you put on the hat and you kind of leave, basically. Right, I see. So the frog, <coughs> the, the song doesn't say Frog Hat run- once. It's got nothing to do with frog hats. Mm-hmm. I just happened to have a hat mm-hmm. of a frog because mm-hmm. I just it felt like made escapism. A song about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about very quickly what was your favorite part of the time music video? Favorite part of the time music video? Not re- not recording oh. the actual in the video. Okay. Yeah. Right? I was gonna say like recording. I've got one, and after like watching it is I've got one. Is probably the part when i'm doing like the maths in the maths book oh, and yeah. then you're like pointing down on it and like ben's there as well and then i'm like trying to like figure out the maths i think that part's really funny 
Um, and in terms of filming it on the day, what was your favorite part? Running down the street. After. <laughs> Ben's car. Dad's car. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Everyone always asks me, so, so were you actually like running fast? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was running. <laughs> um, okay, cool. And then Frog Hat, what was your favorite part of the Frog Hat music video? Uh, favorite part? It's going to be the little, oh, the rain. The rain. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, the yeah, coolest yeah. shots were like the nighttime shots. It was shots. the coolest shot, but when we filmed it, would you still say that's your favorite part? Because that was hell. It was exhilarating. It was. Because I thought I'd be freezing and then I got hit, but then I got hit with adrenaline. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, damn, I'm not cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool to feel that. And like, I guess I'd been in my comfort zone in my bedroom creating music for a while. Mm-hmm. And I realized that like, whoa, that rush was cool. Mm-hmm. And I actually do really enjoy being in situations where the body is challenged. Nice. That's beautiful. So like gym and working out is also coming into that Mm -hmm. that you know that moment when you're maybe at the bottom of a lift and everything's gone Mm -hmm. the whole world just disappears because all you can concentrate is getting this goddamn weight off of me or like standing up without breaking my legs like i chase that feeling a lot that's that's beautiful i want to come back to gym as well so i got remind me in case i forget but i've got two two topics i want to cover with you is books and gym or or exercise in general yeah but moving on to then uh we didn't do the music video for mr summer but Mm. tell me about that as well so the mr summer video was really cool we were planning it for a while it came out really nice Mm -hmm. like you know it's got a kind of sunny vibe the Mm -hmm. outfits Mm -hmm. like me and my girlfriend, we spent some time picking outfits, going out shopping, excuse to get out and go to the shop kind of thing. And then like it was a collab between uh, me, uh, a friend called Gowry. Instagram? Yeah. from Well, it was Instagram, but I f- there's someone else in between. I think it's, yeah, my friend Prince from nice. secondary school. Nice, nice. That's the kind of bri- gap to bridge. Man, at your most recent show. Yeah, you yeah, met yeah, Prince. Cool he's guy. a pretty boy, isn't it? <laughs> he's he's, he's like, a cool guy. Lie. He's a cool guy. I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Through Prince, and then we, me and Gary, talked for a while. We've been planning like to just like work together for a while, nice. and then uh, we ended up shooting that in Birmingham. I think I slept for half an hour. Yeah, I remember we went said. on the train, got to Birmingham. We were shoot. We did all the shots and that. Enjoyed it. We were there with D Original. Mm-hmm. He was there mm-hmm. on the day. We filmed it in one way, which is impressive. <clears throat> it was four location plus locations. Yeah, we filmed that in a day. That's impressive. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, okay, half an hour's asleep. Yeah, and then yeah. came back and then just like conked out, yeah. and I probably had work the next day. And um, it was tiring, but it's the thing is like with sleep, eighty percent of your sleep has to be good. Mm-hmm. That twenty percent, um. As long as you're happy. Do you mean, by you spent, do you mean of your lifetime's worth of sleep or the night you sleep, 80% of that sleep has to be? Lifetime. Okay, cool. So I try not try to keep it. So out of 10 days, eight days, bang in. Okay. Maybe two you can sacrifice. Mm-hmm. But if you're happy when you go sleep on a trash day, you can wake up rejuvenated. You can survive. Okay. But if you're sad, oh, that, that lack of sleep is going to piss you off. It's going to piss of you course. off. So I was cool. I was happy. Nice. I basically went, Boing, bounced out of bed, went to Birmingham. We had a lovely talk. I had a lovely talk with the original on the train because we took the same train and everything. Filmed it, got back. Um, Editing wise, see, the thing is how I, you know how I said like, I like to be there. You edit with us when we do the music videos. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm assuming because they're in Birmingham, that's quite a a difficult thing, yeah. Like, because imagine you have to export the whole file, send it over. I have to watch it. Then I have to speak. Then it goes back. And then I can imagine there's a la- it can be misinterpreted or miscommunication in that. Exactly. Sense. Because uh, as a creative, everyone is, they, they're in love with their field. Sometimes we need to drop our ego in the way of, um, I know about music, but if you tell me something about my song, yeah, I accept it. Mm-hmm. But there was a small brush in... Uh, part of the video well the whole video I was sent a uh, color grade back mm-hmm. and the video cool but the grade was not what I was feeling my yeah. lips were like gray mm. and stuff like that and this is just like a lesson for anyone like I said oh 
it's not color graded, is it? And then it was. And I said, oh, would it be cool if this happened? Yeah. And I was told that it wasn't possible. Whereas I knew it was possible. Right, right. My girlfriend, again, my, my like right hand gal, I guess, <laughs> literally puts the picture or frame of the video into Instagram, uses the Instagram filters to color grade it. It was good. And I'm like, this is possible. Yeah. And it's just because like, if we were in the same room, I could step in mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. okay, let me, let me have a look. Let me cook. And I just want to be hand on. I just want to have a little cook. Yeah. And that was the little brush in the thinking Richard does music. Mm -hmm. Surely what we're doing is right. Yeah. 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 Let's move. A, let's move along. Yeah. Like Richard, you sit to music. We'll stick to the, what yeah. We know I don't, music. I'm, I want to touch everything. What does yeah. Gaga know about cameras? You know, like <laughs> maybe she does. Maybe she does know about cameras. Okay. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> no, I have a lot of love for the team. It was Killy Pictures. There, It's just that the locationing and like the distance between us made it hard to properly collaborate. Of course. And I would have loved to have edited it together to really bring both of our visions into one. Mm -hmm. In the end, we got there. It was just a bit of a More rocky road. Than was, than was needed. Exactly. Okay, fair enough. Okay. And then hopefully in the future, maybe we could work on something smaller mm. or something as similar or even just like share feedback. Of on, course. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, so I'm just a bit cautious on time. Ben's fucking up. Um, just a bit cautious on time. So very quickly moving on. Our final music video, which is, I think is also the final release music video, correct? which is yes. um heaven yeah how was that that was a long process that was days of learning setting up planning months even right that was my favorite one by far like because the process was very oh wait wait heaven was was heaven the first time i didn't have an no heaven i had an idea but like we sat in the room together and I played the song but that idea was very basic yeah and we injected steroids into it yeah like, it's like yeah. it's black and white but i'm wearing a half crop jacket but just looking at it but yeah it, it was such a beautiful music video man. yeah i i got to share my creative process of when i think of a music video idea like i just left the song on loop and then we're like going oh no this bit this could happen because i i do that like when i do my music videos and it was cool to like bring everyone in on that and it was a really f we were sitting on the floor and that in the big like kensington studios and Ken kensington or kennington Ken kennington kennington, kennington studio no kennington <laughs> studios and then like getting it down and then just spent a whole day with lights because oh, it's a man. white room yeah, you don't want like we were photoshopping frames uh i wore know. sunglasses in one of the recordings because it went from dark to light so quickly <laughs> and like moving like it was the beginning shot where i'm panning towards you yeah and i had to wear sunglasses because that like burst of light in a white room just blinded me yeah. Yeah. but that was that was the fucking months of planning yeah and i really like due to everybody's one. availability as well it just didn't really yeah go to plan i wish um, like i had a record label and then we could all just be on the record label <laughs> and then everyone does their own thing as well but like uh -huh. that would be really cool but uh shout out to neve as well for letting us act use her workspace because that was by far big 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 help um but yeah nice so we talked about a bit about music which i actually want to talk more about but we've also talked about music videos uh the reason i wanted to cover that is because anybody wanting to do music video understands kind of the process of, of going through yeah. it and what works for you might work best for everyone else as well mm. um but yeah going back to music have you got anything you've just done a show in o2 islington yes your previous show before that was the one that you went to what was it again o2 it islington before that was the mustache bar was it nice. mustache? Mustache. Never heard of it. And then you've done, <laughs> you've done. Never heard of that one. <laughs> Never heard of that one. And then you did a few. And anyway, you, you're quite experienced on stage now. So, or would you say that you're not experienced on stage? No, that 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 movement on my face was. Next show is June sixteenth <laughs> in Brixton Jam. Uh, yeah, I'm experienced. Okay, okay cool. So you're quite experienced on stage. How how is it? How is it being on stage? And I don't necessarily. I want to. Uh, I don't know if I want a comparison between recording in your bedroom versus you know 
being live in front of an audience. So when I record in my bedroom, I don't record the whole song as one take. When I'm live, in a sense, I'm performing the whole song as mm -hmm. one take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did that for some of my first, I think Way We Go, I recorded in entirety. <laughs> Jeez. Because I didn't know how to separate the tracks, mm -hmm. so I didn't really know what I was doing. But yeah, in my bedroom, I've got control over and stop, start, nice. do this, do that, hold on a second. At the show, it's just one whole take. Mm -hmm. And I think some people might get scared to mess up, but it actually doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's like a video on my Instagram where I'm freestyling and someone says avocado, avocado? zucchini <laughs> at the beginning of the music video so at the beginning of the video yeah and you'll see in that video i mess up oh and you say zucchini no Ooh. i just go it was and everyone's getting gassed at that it yeah. actually doesn't matter what oh, you say yeah, yeah 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 like that's what i got from tyler the creator he's like mm -hmm. if i'm having fun you'll have fun so yeah i have fun in my room and I will try my best mm -hmm. to get everything perfect in the stage. If I mess up, I'm not going to go, hold on, run that back. <laughs> hold on, run that back. I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm just going to go. Da -da 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 I'm not going to say anything, though. Mm -hmm. No one will know. Because I got that all the way from performing piano live. Mm -hmm. I used to do jazz cafe nice. at my secondary school. But I never played jazz there. Mm -hmm. I just played, like, Studio Ghibli and stuff. And I remember a moment, like, me and my friend Kevin... We were doing a duet. We were doing You Got a Friend in Me oh, yeah. uh, on piano. And we were playing the left and the right hand. And we messed up. But I was like, I looked at him. I was like, eh, and we're just making it up. Because <laughs> they don't know if we look okay. And I feel like from that moment, I, I gave him a lot of, to moxie with that moment and i feel like i hope he carried that because i told him i said bro like it actually doesn't matter yeah. like we can do whatever we want and that's the thing i view i went to see one of my other friends in a gig concert recently you have other friends and he came off stage and like his performance was beautiful and he came off stage and was like oh yeah i was out of tune on this moment i was in this moment and i was like bro no i couldn't even tell yep and that's not even from like a musically untrained ear his other friends there that, that were musically trained were like nobody could tell mm. so it really shows that as long as you play it off and if you do what you do in confidence people are just going to accept you for what you are that's it that's musical the, riz that's musical what it is <laughs> musical that. riz uh so you said that you wrote Frog Hat in a place where your mental health wasn't the best. What are things that you do now or back then that really lifted up your mood or got you out of this this so-called dark period? Um, nowadays, or let's say nowadays, and then I'll go back and say what I would have mm -hmm. lacked. Like nowadays for me, back then as well, exercise is very important because mm -hmm. again, I need that feeling of um, struggle to the point where everything disappears to train that part of the brain to actually let things pass by, not to push them out, but to acknowledge all things around you without, you know, concentrating on ones that you don't want. Mm -hmm. That's like meditation. I'll do it like 20 minutes a day. I don't do 30 minutes. I try for 30 minutes sometimes, but 20 minutes I'll do. And then exercise, uh, strength training. Um, and then, um, what else create sharing not just creating when i share mm -hmm. whoa, crazy results in my like person mm -hmm. when i create and hoard i feel like a like a hermit i don't really feel complete right but the sharing part's good and also like but you're quite yeah. <coughs> selective on who you share with right now I am as much more than I was yeah, before. Have you noticed Penny hasn't been sending our songs in a while? <laughs> I don't send anything anymore. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Like, I might put it in the chat and I'll delete it afterwards. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I've gotten past, like, I don't want to hear things over and over again. Or I get, like, that demo feeling. Like, I'll, I'll be like, oh, that sounds great. I can't top that. And then I get stuck. Yeah, what are the other things that pushed you in those low points? Uh, I'd say, like, really being me unapologetically mm, elaborate a bit more as in like <sighs> celebrating 
both my um masculine and feminine feelings and traits mm-hmm. without trying to push too far into one or the other mm-hmm. so sometimes i want to chill and look cute i'll get a manicure like i've got one before and i was like yeah this is nice but sometimes i'm out there you know the exercise of intense working out like raw you know with the boys and stuff like that just celebrating all of that and not mm. feeling guilty of any part or point in myself because uh, society tells me i have to be a certain type of person and i kind of just deleted that part mm-hmm. now so like i know my priorities i know my boundaries i'm in a great relationship now where yes. i can go as a creative okay go away <laughs> you know and it's i think that's perfectly healthy mm-hmm. to be able to say yo or i get roommate syndrome right like <clears throat> so yeah being able to express myself fully and set boundaries and la- allow people in when mm-hmm. i want people and allow people out when i don't need people like, have that control yeah having control over myself i know <laughs> you've been reading a lot so just tell me the names of the three books that you've read recently so i started off with a creative the creative act a way of being nice. by rick rubin awesome a uh, rich dad poor dad and accounting and bookkeeping in seven days so why have you dipped into the two financial side of things outside of the one creative book uh because i work part-time okay. and i don't like working for people anymore so I'm going to take money from there and put it into somewhere that can give me back my time. Sounds good. I love the people there. Mm-hmm. It's nothing against them. And they work for someone too. No but one it's, in it's the not place. Mu- it's not music to. related. So yeah, it's, it's not music related. Not you. It's not how I want to spend my time. Yeah, yeah. I'm not interested. So when you get that money, you're going to reinvest that into music. Exactly. Oh, yeah, cool. And I'm sure maybe a few of those people might watch this. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I don't like them. Of course. It's just that I want my own time i don't want to have to say do you mind if i go on holiday in in two months i just want to no i I say um okay i'm going yeah yeah, that's what i want to do kind of thing um quickly when i just said uh about reinvesting the money into you and music i never realized i didn't cover equipment so very quickly what sort of equipment do you use or what's the sort of required setup for somebody to make music from the basic to intermediate to advanced yeah so i'd say like If you want to record yourself, because some people might just want to produce, Mm -hmm. let's say you're recording and you might produce. So you, I didn't have a MIDI keyboard when I first started. I used to, all the melodies on Blow Up were played with my laptop keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. There's in verse two, there's a part that goes, I play that on my laptop keyboard. (laughs) So you don't really need a MIDI keyboard. Essentially, obviously you can get one There's no to make life easier that. to make life easier you will need your microphone uh you can go for anything you want have mm-hmm. a read about them have a watch of them you pick what you like mm-hmm. i picked the sm7b because michael jackson recorded thriller with that so i was like yeah i want to use that what the heck i use that and then the at at2 uh is a good mic as well if you're a singer it's a condenser mic for the sm7b you're going to need a cloud lifter which is essentially just an amplifier okay, cool. to cleanly pull up the volume because it's a that. very quiet mic. Nice. And it's good because you might have seen people like Logic recording in a van and holding a mic. Mm-hmm. don't know if you might have seen that, yeah. I haven't, but yeah. Yeah, he's recording with that mic because it's really good at just picking up what's right in front of it. Mm-hmm. And it can be a rubbish room. My room is a rubbish sound room. So I got that mic because I was like, I can record wherever I want. And it will sound good. So there's mic. Uh, you might need an amplifier if you have a dynamic mic. But then you have your audio interface. If you're starting out, just get a Scarlet. It's called Scarlet. You might have seen my old red ones. You mm-hmm. remember I had that red one with the dials? Yeah. That's a Scarlet. I've moved up to UAD, which is just fancy. Sounds a bit warmer. They have like some uh, hardware emulations of certain really cool old gear. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't need that. You just need a Scarlet uh, into your laptop, Windows, Mac, whatever you want. And then that is actually it. There's nice. nothing else speakers? you need. You can get speakers, but you can get headphones. Yeah, headphones or speakers. I started with headphones 
and then I would listen to it on the speakers on my computer to sound like what it would sound like on a rubbish speaker. Right, okay. Yeah, because you need a rubbish speaker as well. So you can cover from an audience that has bad audio output to an audience that has really good exactly. audio. Okay, cool. You don't want to be selfish. <clears throat> Nice. Yeah, well, I was meant to do this uh, halfway through the podcast, but unfortunately, I forgot. Um, I want to challenge you to freestyle over a beat. Mm -hmm. But before I do that, can you list three, your top three inspirations for music? Yeah. Uh, so number one would be, I know it's controversial. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not bothered about what you think. It's going to be Mr. Kanye West. Nice. Number two, we're going for... Franklin Ocean. Ooh. You know, a bit of Franklin Ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number three. Number three is going to be Amine. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <coughs> so, freestyle time. Yes. Uh, Lem Ben, we need a word. We're going to give you a, a topic, word. Topic. Oh, topic. We're going to give you a topic and you have to either rap about it or include that into your freestyle. How long am I going to freestyle uh, for? As long as you can go. I'm going to say minimum <laughs> 30 seconds. Is that a lot? I don't know. I don't know. Just, and maybe just go until you... And I'll just go and there's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, topic, topic, topic. Uh, Asian food. Ooh. Lem, happy with that? Yeah. Asian food. So we talked about it earlier. So yeah. Well. Yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. So, Richard Carter, this is your freestyle. You have 30 seconds to rap about Asian food. Okay. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, ooh They thought I would've changed, I'm the same guy I've been up in China, up in Shanghai, yeah They got a whole thing wrong Richard was in January, sitting in Hong Kong And I was on the boat, going down the lake They wondering where he's at, they said, oh goodness sake He's a real boy and he spits real rap And that's the only way you can put it on tracks Is when you run it back Chicken and rice in my plate when I'm <laughs> I actually... That was kind of I don't know, but like, fam, I haven't freestyled in so long. <laughs> like, I used to practice an hour every day. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I used to do an hour every day. Wow. But like, I dropped it because I was like, freestyling is not really part of music. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like a circus trick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if they said, oh, yo, do that video transition real quick. And you're like, yeah but i get it yeah. it's like a it's a party trick mm -hmm. and then i was like when i'm making music and when i'm performing i don't like start freestyling yeah. it's just a cool thing to do mm -hmm. i think it's very old school hip-hop when they'd be like in cyphers and be like yeah 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 like eminem going i'm still in the eminem <laughs> like i really i see it as something really cool every now and then i bring my level back up and then i just leave it mm -hmm. and i bring it back up and i leave it a little bit like juice world was really good at freestyling as well and i yeah, this is my era of ass freestyles. <laughs> well, that ending was pretty cool. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a mid freestyle every now and then. Well, thank you for that, Richard. I mean, if you're being here on the guest, can you tell everybody what you have upcoming? If you stare into camera, was that one? Yeah. A? One. A, one. Stare into it. Tell them what you have upcoming, any shows, any music. What's next for Rich Carter? So, June 16th in Brixton Jam. Do not be a loser. I'm going to bring my laptop to the show and it's actually going to work because I'm going to do some vocal effects for the first time. So you heard it here first. He about to go distorted auto tune baby voice. It's going to be really fun. I've never performed in Brixton Jam before. Other than that, there have been no announcements for anything else. Um, cool. Well, thank you very much, Rich Carter. All the best on your show. Uh, thank you, Lem and Ben, for being here as well. Um, until the next episode of the Create Rate Podcast. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Sounds slow. <laughs> it's about to get real dark in here. <laughs> <laughs>